Skis, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. We are on episode 90 of my little wrestling recap show where once a week I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, let you know what's going on, give you the recap, the review, let you know what's going on in the storylines, and let you know if there's any good matches to go out of your way and check out. And if there's any major pay-per-views, I will do a separate episode on that reviewing said pay-per-view. So, let's dive into the recap. We are starting with Monday Night Raw in Dallas, Texas. We got the new tag team champions Finn Balor and Damian Priest. They cut a promo claiming that Judgment Day are back on track, baby. Out comes Cody Rhodes. He gets all revved up, takes off his tie, looking for some action. Damian Giggles challenges Cody for a a match at Crown Jewel. Cody accepts. Judgment Day gang up on Rhodes, smashing his ankle with a steel chair. A pretty standard opening right here. I mean, you got the match set up for Crown Jewel. Kind of nice that Damian Priest is going to get the rub right there. Uh, Obviously going to have lots of shenanigans around that, but an all right opener. We move on to Alpha Academy going up against the New Day. We got Xavier Woods. He's uh, too busy doing an impressive reverse worm dance. He gets caught in an ankle lock by Chad. Kofi hits trouble in paradise on Otis. Dives onto Chad, allowing Woods to hit the elbow drop. New Day pick up an impressive victory right here. Damn, I mean, New Day and Alpha Academy put on a really good back-and-forth tag team match right here. New Day on fire lately, man. Really strong performances in this match, flying all over the place. Kofi just going crazy. Really like the chemistry between these two teams. I mean, they kind of just keep letting the, like, three really good tag teams wrestle each other over and over again. But, I mean, the results are always good. So, I mean, I, I don't really blame them. Seven and a half at that. We got NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch is getting interviewed. Zaya Lee is stalking her in the background. And later, Zaya Lee attacks Becky Lynch. So, okay. When are they going to use Zaya Lee? I mean, she's been lurking around for weeks and she hasn't really done anything. So, just waiting for her to do something. We got the Viking Raiders performing a ritual to make Ivar a singles competitor. Uh, until I, Eric is back anyway, he's injured right now, so, yeah, Ivar, freaking really good for him, man, he has been awesome lately, I've always liked Ivar, but even as a singles competitor, he has been fucking arguably better than his tag team performances, maybe we got an Intercontinental Championship shot against Gunther in his future, that would be awesome, just to you know, acknowledge his great performances. And I must say, Valhalla looked badass in this, like, video. She looks so cool. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of her, but whoever's doing the costume design on Valhalla, well done. Pretty cool segment. Moving on, we got Seth Rollins is met by Rhea Ripley backstage. Retro. Ripley is tempting Seth with the idea of becoming the champ, By joining up with the Judgment Day, Damien cashes in on Roman, and Judgment Day live heavily, happily, Jesus, that was a rough one. Judgment Day live happily ever after. They all get the championships. How's that sound, Seth? Seth says, nana. It's a good offer, but Seth will not take it. I don't know, man. I think he should probably take it. Pretty Sounds like a good deal. And, you know, you could probably get away with like six months before they backstab you. I, I would take it. Moving on, Natalia and Candice LeRae are pumping up Indy Hartwell for her title match against Becky Lynch. Uh, okay, they, they've been doing this a lot, you know, just shoving Natalia into stuff, and why not shove Candice LeRae in there as well? I guess they have nothing better to do with them. Now we get to that match. NXT Women's Championship on the line. Becky Lynch defending against Indy Hartwell. Indy on fire right out of the gate, taking it to the champ. We got a superplex into the disarmor by the champion Becky. Indy, impressive deadlift powerbomb to get out of that. That was fucking impressive. 
Becky hangs in there, locks in another Disarmor. Indy can't escape this time, and Becky retains the NXT Women's Championship. Awesome performance right here from Indy Hartwell. Showed off her strength and technical st- skills. I mean, yeah, really impressive. And Becky, I mean, good selling. Really putting over Hartwell. She's done a fantastic job, I think, so far at kind of boosting up the uh, younger, newer talent on NXT right now. Or some of them that maybe have gotten lost in the shuffle a little, a little bit. Indy Hartwell, I kind of think, is in that boat. And she had a good match right here. Seven at the We got Adam Pearce, visited by SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis. Aldis wants to smooth things over after a pretty rocky start with Pearce last week. Things seem to go okay, but, you know, if I was Adam Pearce, I wouldn't trust Aldis. He was generally always a heel uh, in his wrestling days, so don't trust him! Uh, Could there be, though, uh, maybe an Adam Pearce versus Nick Aldis match at Survivor Series? I mean, Adam Pearce used to wrestle. Nick Aldis used to wrestle. Is there something they can do with that? I mean, I don't... It's not really something I would get incredibly excited about. Not really big on Adam Pearce. Nick Aldis is fine, but just wondering if that is something maybe they're building towards here. We move on to the contract signing for the women's Fatal 5-Way match Nia Jax, Zoe Stock, Shayna Baszler, Raquel Rodriguez are all in the ring. They sign. Ripley, though, is fashionably late. She comes out. She calls Pierce out for trying to sabotage her reign as the champion. Regardless, though, she will destroy her competition. Nia Jax talks back to Mommy, starts bullying everybody in the ring, and Raquel Rodriguez has had enough. She snaps, and Hell unleashes. Mommy leaves laughing as the rest of them fight with each other, but Nia Jax emerges from the pile, starts staring down with Rhea Ripley. Pretty damn good segment right here. I mean, Nia Jax, I just love the way that she she talks. It's just natural. It doesn't come off as scripted. I just, I love it, man. I love the way that she just goes about uh, her way. She's just awesome. Good segment, and I am pretty damn excited for that match. Thumbs up. We got Ludwig Kaiser backstage aggressively motivating Giovanni Vinci, but they get interrupted by Bronson Reed. Ludwig, offense taken, he leaves. Tazawa appears, he wants a match with Bronson Reed. Reed laughs, he says, uh, no thanks. Tazawa, with a death wish, chops Reed in the chest. Bronson accepts the match. Rest in peace, Tazawa. But a pretty funny segment right here. Moving on, we got Johnny Gargano going up against Giovanni Vinci with Kaiser. Until Ciampa returns to chase him off. So no more Kaiser, and Ciampa is back, but I don't think he's ready to wrestle or anything. Gargano, final beat DDT for the quick W right here, and honestly, a little bit disappointed. I wanted this match to be a real banger, like... Oh man, it, it just it was a short one, but uh, kind of just setting up for Champa to return and hopefully getting DIY back in the ring, but better be freaking soon. I am excited. Maybe they're, you know, trying to not go too crazy. They don't want anybody to get hurt because this group right here, they're uh pretty injury prone right now. So uh yeah, try and stay healthy, get DIY back in the ring, and we'll hopefully get some momentum with this this group right here. Moving on, it is Logan Paul. Oh boy, what's he want now? He cuts a promo. He gets wooded by the crowd viciously. Dom Mysterio arrives to get booed. Dom and Logan trash talk Rey Mysterio. And then they bring ring announcer Samantha Irving to the ring, also Ricochet's fiance. Paul demands she announces him as the new winner and the champion and all that crap. Ricochet appears to save his fiance. Uh, Literally a copy and paste promo segment from uh, Logan Paul from last week. He gets wooded. It's meh, not that great. Moving on, Nikki Cross and Natalia going up against Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. Non-title match right here. Nikki is on a different planet tonight. She is staring blankly at the camera. She walked down... Like, really slowly in her entrance, the match was, like, halfway over by the time she fucking got to the ring. Anyway, Natalia gets teamed up on. Champs hit the unprettier splash combo to easily win this match. Uh, Interesting shift, I will say, for Nikki. This is, like, her seventh gimmick change, but this is one of the better, uh, more appealing-looking ones so far. Very early, but I'm interested to see where this ends up. Well, we'll see. 
We got The Miz. He complains to Adam Pearce. And here comes Rhea Ripley again to cut him off. Steals his camera and microphone away. Poor Miz. I mean, funny quick segment right here. I'm giving that a thumbs up. We move on. It is Sammy Zayn going up against Drew McIntyre straight up. That's a main event match right here. Drew smashing Zayn with heavy chops. Flings Sammy like a toy over the announce table. We got a great rally from Zayn. Stopped by numerous suplexes from McIntyre. Here comes Rhea Ripley disrupting the match. Zayn is distracted. Gets nailed with a Claymore and McIntyre. Another W. And fuck yeah, man. That was a banger of a match. Drew focused... Uh, uh, his focused intensity. I I love this Drew McIntyre right now. He's not messing around. He's not fucking trying to get buttered up by the crowd or anything like that. He wants to be a champion. He wants to kick some ass, and I'm loving it. And Sammy putting up a strong fight against this damn near unstoppable Drew McIntyre right now. Crowd was into it, and also building more interest with this developing Drew McIntyre Judgment Day proposition. What is Rhea Ripley up to? She is definitely playing, like, some 3D chess right now. She is, like, thinking moves ahead, so we'll see where it goes. 7.5 out of 10. Really good match. We got Bronson Reed versus my man, my poor, poor Tazawa with Maxine. Poor Tazawa tries, but he fails to defeat Bronson, eats a tsunami, and Reed wins in a squash match. A fairly effective kind of a comedy squash match, if you will. Backstage, New Day, uh, Alpha Academy, they are cheering up poor Tazawa by making him dance. Um, Alright, uh, moving on. McIntyre and Seth Rollins, they agree to have to not have Judgment Day be involved in their match at Crown Jewel. I really hope they, they stay out of it. No Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley has been talking to both Seth and McIntyre. Really makes me feel like there's going to be shenanigans, but I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Main event time. Jay Uso going up against Damian Priest. Finn Balor arrives to help out his Judgment Day homie, grabbing Jey Uso's foot, allowing Priest to hit south of heaven for the victory. Uh, Pretty solid, I don't know, kind of plain main event, not much going on. Priest and Uso getting in their offense, but uh, I could see the interference coming a mile away in this match. It's kind of annoying. Finn and Priest continue whamming Jey Uso. Here comes Cody. He hobbles his way to the ring, looking to return the favor on Judgment Day, but they escape. And that is the end of the show. Uh, Pretty good Raw this week. Uh, Some lame stuff. You know, Logan Paul segment was literally like the exact same thing they did last week. Giovanni versus Gargano for me personally was a pretty big letdown. I'm quite a big fan of Giovanni and Gargano. Was hoping uh, for some fireworks and I did not get that. But we did have some good matches. You know, Indy getting the spotlight on Monday Night Raw. That was a nice treat. Loving Bronson Reed right now. Andrew McIntyre. Andrew McIntyre. They're no nonsense badassery. That's some pretty good shit. And the Judgment Day situation with Rhea Ripley talking to everybody, trying to make some moves and do some shit. Pretty interesting. 7 out of 10 for Monday Night Raw. We will move on now to NXT 2.0. I just got to find the NXT notes. I am struggling. Where is it? There it is. Here we go. NXT. We are starting off, it is Halloween Havoc, night one. We are kicking off with a sick musical performance. I didn't get the name of the band, but it was fucking metal. It had a female singer, and I loved it. Thumbs up for that performance. We got Shotzi Blackheart dressed as Hellraiser. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal outfit. Thumbs up for that. And then Scarlet is also there. She is dressed nowhere near as awesome as Shotzi is. And we start off this show with Devil's Playground. It is Roxanne Perez dressed as Freddy Krueger versus Kiana James dressed as Kiana James. They are actually using children's playground items in this match. That <laughs> you got swings, like slides, a kiddie pool, but there's like a pentagram on it, so it's demonic, so it's okay. Uh, Perez with a Russian leg sweep through the children's slide. Now, that was impressive. The slide breaks in half. I didn't see that coming, so thumbs up. Made me giggle. We got Roxanne hitting the Pop Rocks onto the brick-filled purse. Grabs the win over Kiana and a hell of a way to start off uh, Halloween Havoc. Rough brawl. I mean, I love the playground weaponry. Crowd was hot. The weapons uh, were good. And I like the costumes. 8 out of 10. Great stuff. 
We got Metaphor. They have their fortunes read backstage for a pretty solid segment. And then we have the debut for Lexus King, formerly known as Brian Pillman Jr. He's going up against Dante Chen, who I was like, oh my god, why aren't they using Dante Chen? You look at this guy, he looks fantastic. Where has this guy been? Anyway, King displays an aggressive, brawling style in this match, hits a twisting neckbreaker on Chen to pick up his first W. A solid debut match, I mean, uh, for King. Not a lot of flashy offense, kind of focusing in on that brawling style. Could work out pretty good for him on NXT. Uh, Showed that he can sell, you know, Dante was getting in some moves, it wasn't a pure squash match or anything. A nice start. We move on to the Women's Breakout Tournament Semi-Finals match. Ariana Grace versus Kalani Jordan. Grace is taking it to Jordan, getting in lots of near falls. Kalani rebounds, hits the split-legged moonsault, pins and wins. Kalani Jordan advances to the finals. Strong effort right here from Grace. I love that gimmick of hers. It's hard to explain it, but it's cool. And I hope to see her again soon. Pretty impressive performance in this tournament. And Grace, or sorry, not Grace, Kalani continues to roll on in this tournament. Solid match overall. We got an update here with Von Wagner. He is still slowly progressing with his rehab. Mr. Stone is still terrified to face Braun Breaker next week. He is going to die. Shotzi, now Shotzi scissor hands, and Scarlet is a vampire. Like, where's the creativity here? Anyway, Creed Bros, they show up to spin the wheel for their next match. And, uh, sorry, for their next match against Humberto and Garza. It lands on T. LC, oh my god, yes, probably my favorite match type, let's fucking go, that is going to be awesome, we got NXT Tag Team Championships on the line, Dawn and Stax defending against Andre Chase and Duke Hudson with Thea Hale and JC Jane, champions hot start, Dawn sends Stax flying onto Chase U, taking them out, we got a cool clothesline German suplex combos by the family, Hudson suplexes Dawn onto Chase to break up the pin. That was pretty cool. And then Jane slides in a crowbar. Chase says, nah, nah, not going to use that. Dawn roll up is countered by Chase. Pins and new NXT Tag Team Champions. It is Chase freaking you. Oh, no. What happened, family? Might be the best match I have seen from these two teams right here. Family was like rolling, man. Nice tag team offense and combos. Chase U, I like the smart strategies that they were using in this match. Plus, Mr. Chase keeps his integrity, winning this match clean. I mean, fuck yeah, that was a great match. A that thing. And then we got a hard hitting home true segment with Nathan Frazier. Uh, it was okay. He's talking about injuries or some shit. Eh, moving on. Lights out match now. Gigi Dolan versus Blair Davenport. Gigi cracks Blair in the back of the head with a strap. That was fucking nasty. Blair then hums a chair right into Gigi's face. That was equally nasty. Blair hits Dolan with a Falcon's arrow through a table. We got a KO blow and Davenport wins. Vicious fight right here. Going hard with that strap, man. Oh my goodness. Hope everyone's okay. Stiff strikes. A short but sweet brawl. Seven at that. We have a pretty intense interview with the NXT champion, Ilya Dragunov. I mean, I don't think he can not be intense. So uh, pretty good stuff right here. We move on. Carmelo Hayes gets weirded out by Shotzi and Scarlett dressed up as creepy twins. I think they're that's from like The Shining or something. I don't know. They're those fucking twins. Thumbs up though. Pretty funny moment right there. We got the next and final semifinal women's breakout match tournament. Okay, that made no sense. Semifinals women's breakout tournament match. Lola Vice versus Carmen Petrovic. Petrovic dive onto Lola by Carmen. Uh, Nice splat right there. Just kind of a hard landing on the outside. We got the head kick by Lola Vice. Takes out Petrovic. And Vice is heading to the finals versus Kalani Jordan. 
Uh, solid quick match, both using a lot of kicks, both very, very uh, prevalent in their kicking offense. Uh, I really did like Petrovic. I'm, I'm not really surprised that she didn't get the win here because Lola is a bit more known on the roster, but uh, I thought she was really impressive in this tournament. So a good job from her, hoping to see more of her. Moving on, women's tag team champs, Chelsea and Piper, they're dressed up as the Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood. Pretty good stuff. They get into it with Chase U. Hale and Jane challenge them to a match. That will be pretty good. I think that's going to go down next week. We got Jade Cardgill. She is here to watch the main event match. NXT Women's Championship on the line again. Becky Lynch defending against Lyra Valkyria. We got a pretty close split from the crowd here. A little bit in Becky's favor, but they are cheering pretty hard for Lyra Valkyria as well. We got an impressive split kick from the top rope by Lyra. Pretty damn impressive. Becky with a unique stunner. We got a, a fucking awesome flagpole sell by Lyra off of the DDT. So good. Becky with a brutal manhandle slam. Lyra kicks out of that. She just dumped her on her head. Becky goes for another manhandle slam. It gets countered into a pin by Lyra. And new NXT Women's Champion. It is Lyra Valkyria. My goodness. I mean, congratulations to Lyra. Great performance in this match. Uh, Just awesome. Off the charts chemistry with Becky Lynch. Uh, Really strong back and forth offense. Wild near falls in this one. Crowd going absolutely nuts. And bravo to Becky Lynch fantastic job giving the rub to so many on NXT during a reign, uh, working the double duty, doing Raw and NXT for like a solid month and a bit there. I knew the reign wasn't going to last very long, but it was it was a lot of fun. Eight and a half for this match right here. Really, really strong match. Becky hands over the championship to Lyra, raising her hand in victory as night one of Halloween Havoc ends. Now, I might be a little bit of a sucker here for Halloween, but that was a really fun show, man. Crowd was feeling it tonight. Costumes were on point. Matches were awesome. Women's tournament finals are set and a really strong tournament overall so far. And for Lyra to end the show as the new NXT Women's Champion, well-deserved, man. I mean, I wish I'd been seeing a little bit more of her lately. She kind of seems, I don't know, I feel like I haven't seen her very much. And leading up to this match, it was, I wish there was a little bit more of a setup, but really strong match. Eight and a half out of ten for this NXT. NXT is rolling right now, and we will go on now to SmackDown in Milwaukee. We got John Cena will be facing Solo Sokoa at Crown Jewel one-on-one. So Cena looking to pick up a win in over 2,000 days. That'll be huge. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman, big entrance, is interrupted by L.A. Knight, yeah, who just struts by Roman, who just looks baffled. Hilarious. Crowd goes absolutely nuts for L.A. Knight. Roman is pissed, and it's time to sign the contracts. Knight cuts a promo, Roman gets angry, and he flips the table pretty awkwardly onto L.A. Knight. We got a mini brawl. Jimmy Uso tries to help out, but L.A. Knight... Puts him through the table, yeah. Knight, or sorry, love LA Knight just walking past Roman Reigns right there. That was awesome. And I would say that he schooled Roman Reigns on the microphone in in this entire segment, honestly. Lots of momentum for LA Knight. And Roman just looks a little bit lost, man. Like he hasn't been on TV, just looks really rusty and out of it. Moving on, it is Carlito and Santos Escobar versus... Uh, Street Profits, Ford, and Dawkins. They are rocking a new theme entrance. Um, You know, nothing wrong with their old theme, but the new one is fine as well. I just, you know, their old one was way more iconic, much better. Anyway, nice knee from Santos, but an even better sell right there from Dawkins. Rey Mysterio is jumped by Logan Paul backstage. Carlito leaves Santos to go save Rey. Profits take advantage, nail the revelation for a W. A fine tag team match. Nothing really crazy. Carlito looking pretty solid. I mean, physically, he looks fucking as best, as good as he's ever looked in his life. But uh, fine match. We move on. It is Logan Paul. He is being a douchebag backstage. Kevin Owens stares him down. He ain't impressed. A-Town down under. They, tra- they trash talk Kevin Owens. Theory eats a right hand from Kevin. Good job, Kevin. 
Dragon Lee is met backstage by Cedric Alexander, who would love to have a match with him. Dragon accepts. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Shotzi versus Chelsea Green with Piper Nevin up next. Chelsea getting a little bit too cocky during this match. Shotzi rolls her up for a quick, quick and sneak. I don't know what the fuck. Quick and sneaky W right here. Oh my God. Shotzi on a little bit of a roll right now. I mean, it is her month. I mean, the month of October has always been pretty good for Shotzi, but an all right match overall. We got John Cena. He is in the ring, uh, revving up Milwaukee. And then it gets dark. He thinks the fans are starting to lose faith in him. The crowd starts buttering him up, saying, you still got it, and all that stuff. Paul Heyman comes out to yuck the yum. Heyman, bad-mouthing Cena, says Solo is going to wreck him at Crown Jewel and all that stuff. And then Solo Sokoa blindsides Cena from behind. Uh, we got some good promos right here. I mean, John, always going to have a good promo. Paul Heyman, good stuff. Setting up uh, John Cena as a major, major underdog going into this match against Solo Sokoa. He's got the whole having won a match in over 2,000 days and stuff. So, uh, yeah, kind of uh, new territory for John Cena. We'll see how that goes at Crown Jewel. Dragon Lee versus Cedric Alexander up next. Dragon nails the backflip inverted DDT for the W over Cedric. A solid, fast-paced match. Oh, man, I really wish they gave it a better spot on the show. Like, kind of put it in the mucky middle where, you know, after a segment and, like, not a lot of... People weren't very into this match. Very disappointing. Uh, This one should have been a certified banger, but just didn't quite get there. We got Bianca Belair. She cuts a promo. Didn't forget about damage control injuring her months ago, taking her off of television. And Bianca wants her revenge versus Io at Crown Jewel. Pretty good promo for the EST. She kind of flubbed her words there right at the end. I was like, oh, oh, she was doing so good. You can kind of hear the crowd like kind of going, oh, damn, but still a really solid promo. We got Jimmy Uso going up against LA Knight in the main event. LA Knight doing the leaping superplex BFT and grabs another W. Yeah, solid, solid standard match right here. LA Knight looking very, very strong. Uso making me giggle with his chattering in the ring, like, Telling that, like, (laughs) L.A. Knight has him locked in, like, a fucking headlock or something. He's like, ref, he's cheating, man. He's cheating. I love that stuff. I love it. Roman Reigns tries to sneak attack L.A. Knight, but it backfires. The champ, Roman, eats a BFT, and L.A. Knight right now can do no wrong. Yeah. I mean, damn. Uh, Pretty whatever SmackDown this week. Just, ugh. Uh, I am glad, though, that they are pushing L.A. Knight so hard. Uh, Roman looks like an absolute chump, man. Like, I'm getting nervous that, you know, how good L.A. Knight is looking. Are are they really going to pull the trigger? Like, uh, when they do builds like this, they tend not to. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous. So uh, we'll see. Maybe they're just doing a really good job at setting this up. Or they're just strapping the rocket to L.A. Knight and just saying, fuck it, let's go with this guy. And then there's John Cena, you know, playing the sympathy card tonight. Not really feeling that, you know, it's not really John Cena's thing, like, I, I'm i fine with him coming out, pumping up the crowd, getting them all hyped up, but, like, to be down on himself, I don't know, it's not really Cena-like, not really feeling that, and a pretty eh smackdown overall, four and a half, add ten, you could probably skip this one if you want. Let's go to AEW, we got Dynamite and Philadelphia, fuck yeah, the home of ECW, We got MJF uh, delivering a quick fired up interview slash promo. And then we go into the diamond or the dynamite diamond ring match. MJF defending against Juice Robinson. MJF not messing around beating Juice until he is a bloody mess. Guns assist pushing Max into the steel steps. MJF hits the kangaroo kick. Crowd goes absolutely freaking nuts. Juice is loose. Connects on Max, but Max is able to kick out. We got the Bullet Club shenanigans, but they backfire. MJF clocks Juice with the diamond ring. Heat Seeker pins and retains the diamond ring. Fun crowd-pleasing match right here. And here come the Bang Bang Gang. They attack MJF after the match. The Acclaimed are out for the save. Guns challenge MJF for the Ring of Honor tag titles. I think that's what he has. Max says, fine, but if he wins, he gets his triple B back. I mean, 
Yeah, you should probably have that back by now. It's yours. Max needs some partners, though, so, you know, the acclaimed Max Caster suggests the acclaimed maybe could help him out with that. Max says that he has never liked Max Caster and refuses again to scissor with the acclaimed. Aww. But Kenny Omega arrives. NJF challenges Kenny to a match. Okay, I thought maybe they were going to be partners, but Kenny Omega accepts the match. Alrighty, that'll be awesome. We got John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order going up against Hook and RVD. Oh, fuck yeah. One of my favorites of all time. RVD making the Philly crowd very, very happy. Pulling out some of the classic moves. We got the five-star frog splash, red rum by Hook, and Hungy taps out. Dude, I'm telling you, RVD still looks so good in the ring, man. He looks as good as he did in, like, 2006, man. He looks so good. Fun quick match right here. And it is Sting! It is Sting. He addresses the crowd about his retirement announcement last week. Tony Khan has a gift for Sting. It is Ric Flair. Holy shit, Sting almost faints. Flair does his speech thing that he always does, and out comes Karishjian Cage and his sons. Calls Ric Flair weekend at Bernie's. I must say that popped me. That was fucking hilarious. Cage challenges Darby and Sting to a match at full gear. Sting, after a little dad joke, accepts the challenge. Man, Christian is the fucking man. Love this guy. Thumbs up for him. So funny. So good at being a heel. Awesome to see Ric Flair. I mean, what is this going to be? Is he doing like, I'm going to go to every wrestling company and retire? Like, is that what he's doing? Regardless, always good to see the nature. And uh, good segment. Thumbs up. Chris, uh, Chris Jericho is interviewed about pup, 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 powerhouse Hobbs whooping his ass last week. Chris admits that his ego is hurt, but he claims he has someone bigger to fight Hobbs. So we're going to find out who that big man is, but not yet. Ring of Honor, Trio's championships on the line, Young Bucks and Hangman defending against Hardy Boys and Brother Zay. We got a nice tornado by Zay. Jeff assists Jay hitting the silly string. Uh, We got a twist of fate. Zay launches off of Jeff. Another twist of fate. Pinfall is broken up. Damn. Zay runs into a buckshot. The BTE trigger. Bucks and Hangman retain. Man, MVP performance right here for Brother Zay in this match. Great performance from him. Thumbs up. Clicking really nicely with the Hardy Boys. I mean, good stuff from them as always. Getting their offense in. 7.5 out of 10. Really good match. We got Swerve and Prince Nana. They appear on screen showing they are in Adam Cole's house. Oh, no. And they're eating his chocolate-covered raisins. You're a dead man, Swerve. Oh, oh, and Swerve talks about talks to Adam Cole's baby or something. Gives it a shirt. Regardless, you do not enter a man's home and eat his snacks. That is, that is fucked up. Moving on, Edge is confronted by Darby and Sting. Sting warns Edge slash screams at him that uh, to take his blinders off, whatever the fuck that means. Okay, moving on, AEW Women's Championship on the line, Hikaru Shida defending against Ruby Soho with Soraya. Ruby with a bunch of shenanigans, as always. Shida accidentally spray paints her own championship by mistake. Ruby chokes Sheeta, hits a DDT. We got a near fall right there. Sheeta battles back after two head kicks, puts Ruby down to retain her championship. Solid match. I mean, you know, the Ruby shenanigans, it, it's, it's known at this point, but it did ramp up for a really solid finish, so not bad. We got Samoa Joe. He offers to be Max's tag team partner if he gets a rematch for the championship. MJF says... He will ponder this offer. Moving on, it is Kazuchika Okada and Orange Cassidy versus Brian Danielson and Claudio Castanole. uh, Okada eating Danielson chops for breakfast. He just keeps walking forward. Really good stuff. Claudio and Orange have a really nice counter for counter spot. Claudio catches Cassidy in a massive giant swing, fucking spinning him to the moon. Okada gets a hug from Orange. His reaction is priceless. Thumbs up for that. 
Orange Punch, we got the Rainmaker combo on Danielson. Claudio gets nuts, takes out Okada, hits Orange with a wicked European uppercut, and he steals the huge win right here. Wow. Uh, awesome main event. I mean, Okada versus Danielson was great. Nice debut for Okada on Dynamite. And the Castillo, uh, Cassidy and the Claudio stuff was fucking hilarious and awesome. I would love to see more of that. Hard-hitting match. I really like Claudio getting the pinfall. I did not see that coming. I thought, for sure, you know, Okada, he's going to get the, the pinfall. But, um, no, it's Claudio. Very cool. 8 out of 10. We got Danielson. Appears to be injured. Okada stands over him, appears to be taunting him, so uh, ooh, we got some bad blood right there. And AEW, give me some more RVD, please and thank you. I love him. I love him so much. Fun crowd in Philadelphia tonight. Ric Flair, that was a big old surprise. Main event was great and so freaking cool to see Okada. Hopefully we get to see him some more. That would be good. And a good AEW Dynamite 7 at 10. We'll go to Rampage. We're still in Philadelphia. We got Santana and Ortiz going up against each other in a no disqualification match. Only takes about four minutes for Ortiz to powerbomb Santana through a table. Santana suplexes Ortiz onto a pile of chairs. That's just owie. Santana hits a nasty powerbomb to grab the big win over his former homie. Good brawl right here. Some hard bumps in this one for sure. 7 out of 10. We got Kip Sabian. He cuts a promo trash talking the Philadelphia fans. Not a good idea. Out comes Mark Briscoe. He is back. We got some redneck uh, redneck kung fu. Yep, I was reading that right. To Kip Sabian. And welcome back, Mark Briscoe. We move on to the number one contenders. Four-way match. Willow Nightingale, Anna J. Abaddon, well, okay, Abaddon's here, and Sky Blue. We got Timeless Tony interrupts the match to watch. We got the Pounce by Willow, love it. And then Abaddon is left all alone with Anna J. Hits a weird DDT driver type thing for a surprising victory. Abaddon picking up the win, and she is going to be facing the AEW Women's Champion, Hikaru Shida. That is going to be weird. Really solid match. A little bit chaotic. A little get Some people getting a little bit lost. But Abaddon uh, looking good. I mean, she looks uh, like she's lost some weight. Really like her look. She's like a fucking demon crazy thing. Really cool. Anyway, Max Caster invites MJF to 69. Uh, Bowens corrects him saying that it's going to be day 69 of their title reign. So uh, um, a little bit of miscommunication right there. Very funny stuff. Main event time, Kyle Fletcher versus Konosuke uh, Takeshita, Takeshka, there you go, with the Don Callis family. Takeshka, nasty poison Rana, lariat combo. Kyle eats it, delivers a brain buster. Takeshka delivers a avalanche tombstone, holy shit, somehow Fletcher kicks out of that, thumbs up. We got some stiff shots traded. Konosuke with a couple of knees to Kyle's face. Puts him away for the big W. Certified banger right here. Awesome athleticism on display. Hard hitting and some absolute ridiculous offense. Near falls. Great match. 8 at 10. Fletcher smacks Takeshka and Hobbs with a chair. Kyle about to lose his life, but Don Callis steps in, says he's impressed with Cal's balls, and invites him into the Don Callis family. No! No, Cal! Don't do it! Don't do it! But Kyle wants it, so he's gonna do it! No! And that's the end of a show. Good rampage, solid stuff, 7 out of 10. And we finish it off with Collision in Connecticut, kicking off this show with Jay White with the Bullet Club Gold going up against A.R. Fox. We got a really nice clean backflip by A.R. Fox off the ring post. Nice springboard Spanish fly by A.R. Fox. We got a near fall right there. Jay hits the blade runner to grab the W. And a really impressive showing right here for A.R. Fox. Some seriously innovative offense. Crowd was really, really hot for A.R. Fox. I believe he is from Connecticut, so that would add up. And a good match to kick off this show. 7 at 10. We got MJF, he appears to rile up the Bullet Club, but the numbers are too great for MJF to actually engage with them physically, so he leaves. 
Then we got the acclaimed quick little uh, silly segment backstage involving the number 69. Now we move on to the boys with a quick appearance from Dalton Castles versus the guns. Boys using their quickness for a little bit of offense, but the guns nail a 310 to Yuma for a quick W. A nice cameo for Castles and the boys, I guess. Basically a squash match. Uh, We got Ryan Nemeth backstage looking to meet CJ. Knocks on her door, but instead is greeted by Miro, and he kicks the ever-living shit out of him. We move on to, I think, some sort of trick or street fight. It is for the AEW Women's Championship. Hikaru Shida defending against Abaddon. Uh, I love Shida's Resident Evil costume, man. She's got the red, uh, I think it's Claire Redfield outfit, more so from the movie, I think, with the red dress. Kind of looks like Ada Wong as Ada Wong as well. I don't know. She might be either one of those. Regardless, awesome costume. Thumbs up. Abaddon hits a blockbuster onto a pile of candy. It is Halloween time, so that okay. Sheeta cracks Abaddon between the eyes with a kendo stick pretty hard. Uh, sticks a pumpkin onto Abaddon's head, then blasts her with a head kick to retain the championship. Pretty fun Halloween themed match. I mean, Abaddon, I can see where like the gimmick can kind of limit her a little bit. She kind of just has to walk around. Uh, She can take a lot of damage, and she can just kind of get up and not sell damage very very much. But uh, yeah, kind of limited. Didn't get the best out of Sheeta in this match uh, because of the gimmick. But it was an alright, fun Halloween-themed match. We move on. Ring of Honor Television Championship on the line. Samoa Joe defends against Rhett Titus. Rhett Titus, former television champion himself, we got the classic Joe walk-off, Uranagi, and chokes out Titus to retain. Joe, unstoppable right now, takes down the former champion with ease. Moving on, we got QT Marshall. He is back from AAA. He is going to be defending his AAA title soon, and he looks fantastic, by the way. We got an intense Claudio promo calling out Orange Cassidy for a title match. That should be cool. Up next, we got Ricky Stocks with Big Bill going up against Dax Harwood and Cash we- with Cash Wheeler. House of Black appear in the crowd to watch the match. Bill pulls Dax, breaking up the pin. The referee misses that. Ricky hits a pile driver for a W. Solid match, hard hitting. Admittedly, I'm getting a little bit bored of Dax Harwood and his very old school wrestling style. It's just... He does the same thing every single match, and I don't know, I would much prefer FTR to go back into their heel role, I don't really, not that big on them being baby faces, like, it's all Dax basically, he does pretty much all the talking, Cash is kind of just there most of the time, but yeah, pretty just eh, solid match I guess, pretty hard hitting. Julia Hart appears on the stage, the lights go out, House of Black appear in the ring, they have FTR surrounded. Here comes LFI. Um, Jeez, let me see if I can remember what that stands for. Uh, Nope, don't have it. Anyway, they want to get involved in the unleashing of hell. The brawl begins. LFI appears to be siding with FTR. So pretty interesting right there. LFI is the the group with like Roosh in it and... uh, Bunch of other guys that I don't really remember, but interesting that they're siding with FTR. I think it's just a minor, like, we're alliancing with you for tonight, but we will destroy you next week. Moving on, it is Claudio's squash match sending a message to Orange Cassidy. All right, and then we move on to the main event match. AEW Championship on the line. MJF defends against Kenny Omega. Good lord, what a match. Maxwell with a vaulting backflip landing on his feet. Holy shit, is that AJ Styles right there? Wow, very impressive. We got a buckle bomb by Kenny. Max bounces back into a wicked lariat. Kenny with a nasty dragon suplex onto the apron. And then just a big old power bomb right through the table. How you doing? MJF landing pretty high on his like neck back area, but he seems to be okay. Thumbs up. Kenny slams Max onto the guardrail. We got three V-triggers. Omega sets up the one-winged angel. But Don Callis comes out, runs down. Uh, He gets caught by Kenny Omega, not having any of that shenanigans. 
We got some more near falls. MJF, <clears throat> excuse me, MJF hitting the Panama Sunrise into a heat seeker to put Omega away to retain the championship. Wow. That might have been the best MJF match to date. That was awesome. All around. Like, what a performance from him. The flips, just wow. Outstanding performance from the champ and Kenny Omega. A huge variety of offense in this in this match. I don't know if they used one move, like, more than twice. There was just so many different moves out there. Crazy near falls. I mean, holy shit. I thought MJF lost this one at a couple points there. And MJF, man, technical wrestling in this. Getting really... Quite good, man. He is getting up there in terms of technical ability. He has no slouch anymore. And Kenny bringing that fast, consistent pace throughout this match. Awesome match. Eight and a half at then. And that is the end of Collision. Pretty solid show. I mean, uh, it did feel like a little bit of a drag getting to that main event. Like, that was the big thing. Like, you got a match that big on the card. Everyone's going to be antsy to get to it, but... The main event delivered big time. It was awesome. Should shut up most of the haters of MJF's wrestling. I think that was a really, really good performance from him. And a solid show overall. Six and a half out of ten for Collision. But check out that main event match. It was really good. Now it is time for the three stars of the week. Let us start out with some shout outs. Got to shout out Okada, Orange Cassidy versus Danielson and Claudio. That was just a great... Um, hard-hitting match with a little bit of comedy in there. I loved Orange Cassidy uh, interacting with Okada. Okada's first appearance on Dynamite was a lot of fun. And Claudio just going animal in that match and picking up the win, which was really, really quite surprising. Uh, Got to shout out the Devil's Playground match, Kiana James versus Roxanne Perez. Love the use of the children's playground things i mean i guess that's what a devil's playground is is just a children's playground but they use the weapons quite good i love the halloween themed of that show and that match in particular really good check it out now it is time for the official three stars of the week starting with the third star it goes to Takeshka versus kyle fletcher on rampage Just a great match. I mean, what can I say about Kyle Fletcher? This dude is on another planet right now, having excellent matches with everybody and everything. I saw him going up against Takeshka on the card. I was like, that's going to be a banger, and it was. Good enough for the third star. Second star goes to... It is the Family versus Chase U NXT Tag Team Championship match. On NXT, wow. This was might be the best performance from both of these teams. Really, again, this this tends to always happen when I, I start really getting behind a team or, or a wrestler when they have the championship, they end up losing it. And I was like, oh, they were just getting good, but really strong performance from the family. I would have liked their championship reign to go on a little bit longer, but Chase U, a very deserving tag team as well. That was a great match. You should check that out. Good enough for second star, but the first star is going to Kenny Omega versus MJF AEW championship match on collision. I mean, main event pay-per-view quality match right there on free television. There you go. I mean, it really doesn't get any better than that. Might be the best match I have seen MJF wrestle. He just continues to get better and better. And Kenny Omega, the legend. I love him so much. Uh, so good, good enough for the first star this week, and there we go, thank you everybody so much for listening to the show, we are pretty much, I would say we're done now with the, the Halloween theme of the GamerCast, there was four Halloween episodes this month, so you can go back and check those out, top that off with a versus episode, Dead Space versus Resident Evil, who is the better survival horror video game? Go over there and listen to that episode. You can also watch them. They all get uploaded onto the YouTube channel GamerGX Videos. You can go follow the link down below and check out that YouTube channel. Subscribe and leave comments. Great place over there to leave comments, questions, concerns for the the podcast. You want to have a question answered live, send them on in. You can send in questions related to hockey, video games, or wrestling, and I can answer them for you live on the podcast. That'd be a lot of fun and all that great stuff. You can also follow along on Twitter. Uh, There's a link down below for that as well, and there's an email address just in case you want to 
send an email for some reason that would be fine as well so there we go everybody thank you so much for listening we got crown jewel coming up pretty soon and i think that's really the only major pay-per-view we got halloween havoc night 2 incoming and yeah it should be a lot of fun stay in I don't I don't know where I was going to stay in tune I guess with the GX plus cast you know rate the rate the podcast tell your friends tell your mom tell your friends all that great stuff and follow along and we'll be back again soon with some more GX plus cast